Welcome to getting error information without triggering an error. Hey, I'm Eric. And um, the other day I was on a call with a uh, Microsoft engineer from uh, from the BC product team. The topic of the discussion actually has nothing to do with this video. Um, but in the middle of the conversation, he dropped a knowledge bomb up, uh, on me and I, you know, I love learning new stuff, and uh, I, th I thought, huh, I, I made a small note saying, this is probably a good video topic, actually. Um, so this is the video. Um, and the knowledge bomb was about getting information on errors that might have occurred inside, um, inside Business Central, but in cases where there's actually no no error occurring. Um, I think it, that makes sense. Let me, let me try that again. So you have stuff that are running, you have code that is running, and then an error might have happened behind the scene, but your code is unaffected by that, or it's not, it's not execution of your code is not interrupted due to the error. Uh, but we are able to get your information anyway. Which is a new thing. I I, I will swear that's a new thing uh, on whatever time scale uh, I'm thinking. But instead of me trying to talk myself out of this, let's uh, let's uh, let's write some code instead. Um, so here is a fresh extension, and actually, let me find. Um, find an example. So here's the HTTP client.get. Um, and if we look at that, specifically if we look at the return value, we can see that the return value is optional. So if we don't uh, test for the return value, I put HTTP client.get inside an if statement or we somehow otherwise consume the uh, return value. If an error occurs, it will be a real error. But in case where we're consuming the return value, there is no error. Uh, and if we read the, the documentation saying that, well, if you try to access the uh, the HTTP content property of the response message uh, structure in the case where the request fails, that will be an error. So you cannot, the documentation is saying, you cannot see what the error that occurred was. Too bad. But you can. Um, so maybe after this video, somebody at Microsoft might uh, do something with documentation. Anyway, so, so let, let, let's, uh, let's try this. So we clearly, really needs to get rid of that semicolon because that's just wrong. No, it's not wrong, but it's not right either. So we, we need a client, which is HTTP client. Wow. I do apologize for the weird typing this afternoon. This afternoon, I was going to say. Um, and we need a response structure. Um, and then we can do if client.get, and that's hopefully not a valid URL, comma response, then else, since we are on open page, I will not do errors, I'll just do messages. So, this is this is the case that we want to be into. So normally, whenever you use something like that, then we will go in here and say response if response dot you know HP, well let's do is successful status code, then message all good, um, and we can test for a lot of other things in here if we really want to. Uh, but it's a case where we don't get a so this. Client.get returns true if your call has been successfully from a technical communication, technical 
communication perspective. If your call resulted in an error, like 404 or 500 or whatever error you're getting, that is not a, the call itself did not fail, but the content of the call failed. Uh, so get will still be true, but response dot is, it's, uh, what, what's this? We can, we can go in here, response, dot HTTP status code would contain 500 or 404 or 401 or whatever it is. Um, so let, let's, uh, let's run this one, see what happened. We are published and we need a password, huh? Wakey, 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 customer list. Or oh, there might be, <laughs> maybe I should have killed some other extensions here. Let's see what's happening. Did we get a breakpoint? No, we did not get a break. Um, while that one is recovering, I'm just gonna go into this one and then I'm gonna kill some That's interesting, it's still not recovering. I think it should ask me, oh, your license is expiring. Oh, well. Extension management, let's go in and kill some extensions from other apps. I usually do this all the time. Uh, let's see what we have installed. That one doesn't matter. And this is our new one, scope. So oh, let's get rid of the video or the extension from the scoping video. Did you see that? If you did, you're probably a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, then you might have missed that one. So uh, I suggest you subscribe while we do this. Let me just start error. There we go. I don't know what happened. Here, tons of stuff happened on this one. We're just ignore that one. Error. We got exactly what we expected here. So here is basically the gist of this entire video is that get last error text, which is a way to know what's happened, is still getting updated even though we don't have an error. So normally the way I understood this one, like if you're calling a code unit and then, you know, an AL error happens inside the code unit, then if we encapsulate code unit, then we'll be able to pull this one out. But in this case, we don't see a, we don't really have an, an AL error here. Um, but let's try to see what's happening here. And for some reason, I'm not able to hit the run with the password. Ignore my license. So in this case, you can see this is not really an error. We got error message here. We got a lot, an invalid request URI was provided. Either the request URI must be an absolute URI or base address must be set. So, so now we get out of, out of get last error text which is normally, in my world, populated by, by us doing, you know, an error thing. Now we're getting a, in this case, a raw.net. So we can see the, 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 the internal uh, stack trace from, from the service tier, travel or race and execution, and trappable HTTP operation, uh, run external action, run external action, nav thread, uh, nav HTTP client, send with telemetry, send with telemetry, uh, run action with cancellation token. And so 
So send async eventually and check request before send and pre prepare request. So in this case, it figures out that, hey, that Eric, that was not a URL. But suddenly, instead of just saying, okay, the, the call was never completed, what is going on? And have no clue, then we actually get, in this case, the raw.net error from the service to you directly presented to us. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and I could almost swear that, that this did not happen um, back in the day, whatever back in the day is. Uh, and maybe this is, was something that was changed during the whole error info updates or something like that. But I think it's pretty nice. And, and, and there's probably other places where, where you have this, this scenario where there is a, uh, something, it can throw an error if you, uh, if you, if you don't, uh, call it and, 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 and consume the return value. But, uh, if you do, and still want to know what the error is, then there's a way. I, I, there is a way. This is not a this is not a very nice error to throw at a uh, at the end user. And, and, and you know, you and I know now this is .NET error because you know there was nothing called base address uh, in 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 our HTTP client structure, right? Uh, this is called path in this case. Um, and anyway, that was the that was the knowledge bomb that was uh, thrown at me, and uh, I I do appreciate learning new stuff, and I wanna pass uh, pass it on. So uh, now you also know, and you can pass it on to someone else. And when you're done passing the knowledge bump, you can uh, check this video. There may be another one, that one. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.